time to strip and clean this focus mount I suppose this is the piece that fits onto the back of the shutter has our focus settings ring here and uh, that couples to the helical which is actually in the camera body at the moment this is a little bit uh, stiff to move probably means that the grease has got sticky with age I don't expect any physical damage but since we now know the camera had been dropped on its nose anything's a possibility so we've got three screws I uh, chemically blackened brass and reasonably easily damaged and they're quite tight Pop that screw to one side. We have one loose component in here. That's this little coupling shaft that uh, couples to the shutter release. And I can feel this. this. This is quite sticky, all this stuff. I can see oil on that front face where it goes up against the shutter case. There's some oil marks there. But this is all very sticky with old grease. So my first task is to clean these parts, get rid of all of that contaminants and uh, hopefully once it's been cleaned and I've lubricated it with a little bit of molybdenum, it'll move smoothly. Yes, it's pretty thick with the uh, gooey grease there. As usual I'm just using naphtha, cigarette lighter fluid. You could certainly clean parts like this in the ultrasonic cleaner, but that would probably be overkill. That's good. This component, which appears to be brass, has had some sort of treatment to the surface, uh, which has blackened it. And, but the surface is very matte, which probably helps it um, retain sticky grease like this. So it probably gets into the, the pores of the coating. Yeah, we don't need it to be chemically clean right down, we just need to get rid of the vast bulk of this crap. When cleaning parts like this it's always important to remember to do the edges. 
as they could be carrying a freight of nuisance grease too. There's a little recess there that the that little shutter release extension runs in, so I've just cleaned that out. Alright, that component's clean. Two out of three. This is the front face, the face that goes against the shutter. And here we have the rear face, the face that fits in the chrome focus setting ring. This component requires very little in the way of lubricant. Um, certainly not great wadges of sticky grease. The post on the back fits into this socket on the body and its job is to stop the shutter from rotating. It's the only thing that really does. Right, so what happened to our little extension for the shutter release? I must have picked it up, must have stuck to my hands with the grease as I was working, and I flicked it off the table. Mystery, I'll have to find it was stuck to the back of the camera body while I was demonstrating the camera body like that I picked up this greasy little piece and it had uh, transferred its allegiance to the camera body I'll just clean the filth off this this needs to be able to revolve smoothly so that the shutter will, re will release smoothly. But, um, it wasn't likely to cause us any great trouble. That looks good. So I'll just dry fit these parts to check how, they, how smooth they work. That's good. The focus will move moves through an arc of about 90 degrees. There's a stop pin here running in that notch as you can see, which limits the travel. Okay. Well I think I can just about reassemble that, so I'm going to Apply some molybdenum here. On that bright brass surface that you see. I can apply a little bit in this recess. Which one is it? Oh, this one here, that's where our shutter release runs. I can apply some molybdenum on this 
edge of the ring That should pop in there. That should pop in there. In this piece. in there I think yes that appears to be it oh three screws Well that's much smoother than it used to be, or much less drag I would probably say it's. It was comparatively smooth before but it was sticky, so there's a lot of drag. The drag's gone. That component should be ready to fit onto the back of our shutter, which we have all serviced and ready to go. So I'll we'll find the screws and do that. This little piece of course we need to keep in mind. That fits into a recess here. It's this one I think. Yes, the other one will be the flash one. So it sits in there. That's the length that does that cocks the shutter. So I'll, I'll clean that while I'm here. Then I need to track down the four screws that hold the shutter assembly into that mount. That looks fine. I'll just put a tiny bit of molybdenum around the back of that and the front face so that it doesn't cause us any grief. That can pop into place. Find the screws, next task. And here we have them. They weren't hiding too far away. Our flash contact here should be folded back over the frame here, over the mount. The plastic insulator extends out past the tip of that so it stops it shorting to the to the body at that point and of course I have to line this up and the shutter needs to connect up to You go about here somewhere. It's 
not quite aligned correctly and it should be about there their cocking piece not dropping on there. I'll pop that on there directly I think. That's better. That's in place. So we're just being held up by the piece that cocks the shutter. It wouldn't fall down neatly into place. Needed uh, some assistance. Not that it required any great force. I'll just run those screws up lightly until I've got the whole four seated. Now I'll do them up tight. And check the action of that shutter, the focus ring to make sure it's smooth. And that appears to be good and I want to check the action of that shutter cocking which I can do with a large screwdriver in here rotate that it cocks the shutter nicely and check the action of the shutter release to make sure that that's smooth and it is so that's good that shutter is pretty much ready to go back into the camera body. The next task I'll do here will be clean the rear shut lens element and put it in place because this is our last chance to put the lens back in place. So I'll find that and we'll clean that. Right here we have our rear lens group. Nice and dirty. It even has a fingerprint. Of course I'm not taking any blame for that. This is the same retina C type lens that you would find on a 3C, 2C types. In the case of the reflex model, the mount for the rear group is slightly different. The glass actually protrudes out beyond the mount, um, which is not the case with the rangefinder cameras. With the rangefinder ca cameras, the mount extends out past the glass. or very close to it. You can use a lens set taken from a retina reflex and put it into a rangefinder camera and you'll have no trouble. If you attempt to do the opposite and take a lens set from a rangefinder camera and fit them to a reflex, you'll find that the mirror will hit the back of the lens. And uh, which is a bother and a nuisance. Of course you only find that when the focus has been racked back to the normal rest position at infinity. If you're testing it racked further out you wouldn't notice any problem. making sure that's nice and tight and it all looks good right that is ready to go back into the camera 
So I'll pop that to one side. So I need to prepare the body for that uh, component. We have the brass sheath, if you like, that fits over there and holds the two balls in place, needs to fit in place. And our flash contact needs to go in place. And I'll have carefully hidden them away somewhere where I can't find them in my usual fashion. Here we go. There's our brass piece and it's very sticky. And the two balls and they're very sticky. And the flash contact, which is, seems to be fine. The flash contact's easy. All we need to do is drop that spring down that hole and pop the contact over it. That's sprung loaded, keeps it in contact with the flash contact at the back here. Even though that whole movement will be wrapped in and out with the on the helical. So these components, oh I've got a, picked up a spring there, pop that over there, that doesn't belong. I want to get this icky old grease off here and put some fresh grease on there. So, And the same for those two balls. I'll certainly be using some grease because otherwise you'd never get the thing assembled. It would be all falling apart on you. It's quite thick. You can see the marks on the paper there from where I've been dabbing at that. It's all come from here, that grease. That's a nasty seaweed. It's better. This little brass piece is not symmetrical. The hole for the balls is closer to one end than the other. That's the upper surface or the outer surface. The longer piece goes down into the hole. And the longer piece has a slight turnover on the end at this point. And that's to stop it pulling out particularly easily. So I want some grease on here. Let's put a little bit on here. And then bring in the camera body. And apply a little bit to our post. There's a groove either side on that post and the balls fall into that groove. As you can imagine, it's very hard manipulating tiny ball bearings, particularly when they're covered in grease. Here's one busy trying to escape.
and the balls are supposed to remain in the grooves on the shaft and they're prevented from complete escape by those slots in the brass piece. And it's a bit awkward just to get this just right. Looks just about right. Squeeze those in and make sure they're in place. That one doesn't really look like it's home. No, it's not. Start again. This is a clever little design, some sadist must have worked on this. That appears to be it. Good. We're just about ready to get the shutter back in place. I'm just rotating our shutter release connection here so it's in the correct position to start with because this is a bit awkward. I'll put a little bit of grease into the inside of our cocking piece there. A little bit of grease into the front face there at the post which stops the shutter rotating and the mount in place. And with a bit of luck, make sure that the camera is not cocked, that's good. Make sure that the shutter is not cocked. That's good. If you choose the wrong starting position, everything's going to go badly. With the cocking section in, and now I've got to get the shutter release connection in place. Sometimes you need to wriggle that from the top. Check my alignment. Not really picking it up. Here it is. Just slid down into position. Right. So I just swung that. It did not cock the shutter.
So something is not correct. It's not cocking that far enough. I think our most likely suspect is the position of the cam on the front plate of that camera. I must have mispositioned that. Right, so back off with the shutter. That helpfully pulled that piece right off the front. The balls. You didn't need it to do anything useful like that. Yeah, this piece here, I believe I've got that incorrectly positioned. It should have been further around. So, regroup. I'll take this plate off and then deal with that.